Welcome to this video on inflation-linked bonds. In this short session, our objective is to illustrate how the coupon on an inflation-linked bond is calculated. Having taught inflation for many years, this remains a topic where I perceive there to be a number of misconceptions. Our starting point is arguably the most difficult part, making a distinction between a real and nominal framework. A nominal framework considers only the amount of cash that an investor holds. A real framework looks at what that cash will buy. This is the basis of a key concept. Investors should only care about goods and services that money can buy, not money itself. Inflation-linked bonds pay a real coupon, shown here on the left-hand side, uplifted by realized inflation. The real coupon signals in percentage terms what extra goods and services an investor will be able to afford by deferring consumption until some future date. In this example, we illustrate a long-dated inflation-linked bond issued by the US government. The bond offers a real coupon of 1%, meaning that the cash flow received would ensure that the investor will be able to afford 1% more goods and services relative to some prior base date, which in this case is 2016. Let us say that a bar of chocolate costs $1, and so buying 100 bars will, of course, cost $100. Suppose that inflation over the next 12 months is 2% per annum. Then each individual bar would cost $1.02, and so the cost to buy 100 bars would be $102. At the same time, an individual sees a 12-month investment that offers a real return of 1% on a deposit of $100. At the end of the investment period, the investor will be repaid a sum of money that allows them to buy 1% more goods and services. If they are interested in buying chocolate bars, then the cash flow they would need to receive from the investment should be enough to buy a total of 101 bars. But with chocolate having experienced 2% price inflation, then these 101 bars, priced individually at $1.02, would cost $103.02. So what is the return on the investment? The individual will be repaid their initial investment of $100 plus a 2% uplift for inflation. This is equal to $102. They will also receive a real rate of return of 1%, which in cash flow terms equates to $1.02 per 100 nominal. This is the coupon uplifted by inflation of 2%. So how much would they receive at maturity? $103.02. This is enough to buy 1% more goods and services, as illustrated by the chocolate example. A very common misconception is that the buyer of an inflation-linked bond receives the fixed real coupon plus so-called year-on-year inflation. In the previous example, this would suggest that the investor would receive a cash flow of 3%, the real coupon of 1% plus realized inflation of 2%. This is wrong. If you think about it, an item that costs a dollar today, but $3 in 12 months time, means that prices have increased by 200%. However, this is not correct, as they've only increased by 2%. What cost you $1 today will cost you $1.02 in 12 months' time. In reality, the calculation of the coupon cash flow is more involved. For example, given that inflation figures are issued about two weeks following the month to which they relate, the market convention is to use inflation data published two to three months previously. Also, since published inflation data covers a whole month, an interpolated figure has to be calculated that relates to the specific day on which the cash flow will be paid. These calculations are illustrated in detail as part of the course. Inflation is a topic that many people feel they understand but often find the financial market conventions very confusing. If you would like to know more about the topic, we would encourage you to sign up for the course at the ICMA's website.